So for today's Minor Quibbles, we are going to be talking about 2022 film Ambulance by Michael Bay, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, so this is a um, this is an action thriller, I guess I would characterize it. And uh, the, the basic plot is that Jake Gyllenhaal uh, and his brother uh, decide to rob a bank and things go terribly awry. And they end up hijacking a, or carjacking, I guess, an ambulance that has a dying police officer in the back and a uh, EMT. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they go on a very, very lengthy car chase of sorts through many ups and downs throughout L.A. Um, I won't spoil the ending, but uh, this this is a film that is, every every instant of this film is is the characteristic Bayhem. Yeah. Um, I think maybe to start, most notably, uh, is the, the most notable thing I, I found about this this film is the use of drone footage. Yeah, um, it's I would say every third or fourth shot is a gratuitous drone shot. Yes, used gratuitously. It's not yeah. just a drone shot. It's not just like a flying. You can't do that except it with a flying vehicle. You know, like a helicopter or whatever. No, it's racing drone. Like, yes, FP, FPV style. That thing is flying around ridiculously um, for no other reason than <laughs> it looks totally radical. And yeah. I'm I'm totally here for it. Uh, I think that's, you know, Michael Bay was needing something, I think, to add to his cinematic language. And he found it. And I'm very happy for him. Um, also, if there like, was something that was made for him. It was this type of shot. Yeah, and he's, you know, because he's who he is, and he's just a, a little boy, you know, with toys, you know, making things explode. It's the perfect thing, because he can make it go fast, he can make it, you know, swoop around buildings, go under cars that are going off ramps, and, you know, there's got to be, you know, maybe something fun to do. I don't know if we can find this out, but, like, I think we should take a bet right now how many of those drones crashed in during the filming of this movie and i think it's i think it's i'm gonna say eight i think eight they probably lost eight they probably lost more than just the drone cameras though to be clear there were several shots where i think it was the, the shot itself was suicidal for the camera even sure the fact that it was drone but i'm gonna say on the drone i'm gonna say i'm gonna say four i, I think it's four i don't know yeah i mean there's there's a difference though because those little crash cams that yeah. you're talking about. Um, I don't know what they were using for this movie. And maybe these cameras are, you know, cheap enough. I know they do make very cheap ones that have very high image quality, yada, yada. Um, and maybe they were using those. But in the past, those cameras would be, be put in a thing. I believe that's called like an IMO. It's basically a tank that you put in the camera inside. So you can crash it and you can crash things into it. Okay. And it ends up fine. So you don't lose the investment of the camera. I don't know if they're doing that with all the cameras. Okay. But clearly something that's not possible with drones. Drones are, you know, very sensitive machines that- You can't you know, put a tank around a drone. It needs no, to have its propellers and et cetera. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I, um, and there's a few shots where you can tell, oh, they cut the camera. Yes. A second before the impact, you know, of the drone, you know, doing the thing. There were um, a lot of shots in this where it was like, you know, the camera was swooping like underneath one bridge and then over a bridge and it would kind of like really abruptly cut to a completely different shot. And I was like, yeah, I bet the footage was great up until just that point. And they cut as much of it they could use, but they didn't want to give away the whole thing. So they were like, let's still use it. Even though the cut is like super awkward at this point. Yeah, there was a couple of times where it was used <laughs> in ways where it was like, I don't fully understand what the point of that was. Like the moment that they arrive with the green ambulance into it's like right before they get in the firefight with the family that like helps them escape effectively. Yes. Yes. There's just a drone shot, which I think is being used as an establishing shot of that location, which is like a giant warehouse or something. <laughs> and it just is like, it's just a drone flying around. And then yes. it's like, then you're inside the space. And it's like, I don't know. I don't quite understand like why. Uh, for, for, for viewers who have not, you know, seen this, like just to make it a little bit more tangible, you know, it's kind of like, you can take a shot that would be totally fine if it was just a simple shot, like a simple establishing shot of the warehouse. But instead, in this movie, swap that with like the camera is going to start 100 feet above the building, do like a weird backflip 
go down to the building and then swoop to the side. And that's like your establishing shot of the warehouse. Yes. And, and it's, it's almost as if I can, I imagine that this was almost written or constructed in sort of layers where it was kind of like, in, and this is true of a lot of Michael Bay's work, but in every scene, there must at least be one awesome or over the top element. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, if the camera angle and the camera action, let's call it, uh, isn't, isn't awesome, then the dialogue has to be awesome. It has to be the person saying something in a ridiculous way. If yeah. the dialogue itself isn't awesome, they have to be saying it in a ridiculous way. So it's like, if they're just saying hello, the character will be like, hello, you yeah. know, they have to go, okay, if that's not there, then I don't know. There has to be something crazy happening uh, in the background. There's yeah, everything no has to- That you're yeah. ever allowed to rest. Every, everything has to be at a 10 and every frame is packed yes. with value, like yes. of some kind, whether or not you value it or whatever, he values it. And that's that's the whole point. There's lens flares, there's the lighting is going crazy, you know, uh, the camera's moving around. There's yeah. also gratuitous, uh, like digital overlays of some of the drone shots where that for no reason, there will be like a little like digital crosshairs, like mm. on the image. I don't know if you remember that, but there are a bunch of shots yeah. where it's like the the racing drone is like following the ambulance. And mm -hmm. there's a little like crosshairs that's kind of like trying oh, to it, on. It's just totally superfluous, but it, it might just be that that's supposed to be like the helicopters that are following them or something, you know, yeah. um, who, who knows? The helicopter, you know, I'm just really glad. I don't know. I don't like seek out Michael Bay movies. I, I have to be honest. I didn't even really want to watch this, but I was on a very short flight. It was about 45 minutes there and back, you know, and I, I watched this in chunks. And unfortunately I watched, the portion I should have watched at home on the television was what I watched on the plane and then vice versa, you know, it was like all the emotional ending garbage, you know, is like, I watched that on the nice TV and then every, all the action <laughs> was like a tiny little screen, but I'm glad that it seems as though Michael Bay had a chance to make, I think he was like, I just need to make an R rated movie. Like I'm tired of making movies that are ostensibly for everybody or for kids mm -hmm. like transformers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's done between trans, maybe like pain and gain or something like that. But yeah, uh, the one about Benghazi, um, with um... yeah, I'm just I'm just not a a, a Michael Bay follower, um, and this one just kind of landed in my lap. Yeah, I'm not a Bay <laughs> not a Bay lever. I uh, I'm glad though that he got a chance to use the word fuck as many times as he wanted with this one, and sure. had a gratuitous you know messy surgery scene in there that he could have just be ridiculous and you know do what he does best, which is um be himself you know um so i you know he's he's definitely an auteur right i mean he has sure. such a distinctive style um his films are recognizable from you know 100 feet away you can really just uh you you could just hear the soundtrack or the audio track alone mm -hmm. and you would just somehow know like oh this is a bay this is a bay yeah film. And, for sure uh, one hallmark that i i was reflecting on that many of these have in common is that he likes a protagonist that, or I don't know if you would call Jake Gyllenhaal a pr protagonist in this, but he, he likes a main, he likes a lead character who is a bit unhinged. Totally. So thinking about how, you know, Nicolas Cage in The Rock, like he's this scientist slash whatever FBI guy who's supposed to be a little bit nerdy. Like he's like, knows about bombs and chemistry, but at the same time, he has this kind of way of like, suddenly saying something in a real, you know, you know, Nicolas Cage type of fashion. And yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal was channeling directed that. to do that in this one because there's yeah. so many moments where he's channeling just, the unhinged sort yeah. of like, don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. But it's also, it's also meant for humor where it's like <laughs> the guy in the situation doesn't necessarily react to the gravity of the scenario where, and I think Michael Bay yeah. just thinks that's funny. He's done that in all of his movies where it's like, Remember, there's like a scene in Transformers where they're in the middle of a battle and the guy like ends up getting a phone call or he's trying to make a call or something. And he's like, what? No, I don't want a new payment plan. And it's like, oh, yes. so funny. So there are some things exactly like that in yeah. this one, too. You know, you had like, um, I can't remember. There's something to do with like flamingos or something like some. Flamingos. Yes. Yeah. No, not the flamingos. Those go for something else. Yeah. He always adds yeah. something in there that's supposed to be like, oh, isn't this hilarious? But I don't think that that's funny to anyone but him but you know what jake gyllenhaal make your money to me but <laughs> but but is it like is it funny like well, actually is. is it funny or is it just kooky i don't know like it yeah. like i don't 
it, it's like um you know how there's there's kind of like a, a loop around effect with some humor where it's like it's you it's so dumb and it's so low brow and it's so beneath you but then it all kind of like comes back and then you kind of find it funny again because you kind of just like allow that door door to open a little bit yeah it's i don't know it's kind of how i feel about any of these movies which is like i don't know why they even attempt to shoehorn any kind of plot into any of these movies there's really no point to it True. ultimately it's like just give me 90 minutes. I don't need this thing to be over two hours long. You know, it's like yeah. by the end of it, when everything's in the hospital and you're like wrapping up the story, it's like, I don't care anymore. Like you're not a good enough filmmaker for that kind of thing for me to want to stick around. So it's like, you know, listen, new Michael Bay movies coming out and it's like 45 minute, you know, boat chase and then 45 minute airplane chase. And then, you know, and then we got, you know, some people on some motorcycles and let's call it a day. Like, fine, I'll go see that movie. I don't know if I want to pay 25 bucks for it, but like, there, I don't, I don't like need... Very conspicuous uh, fat in this movie that could be cut when you actually consider what the movie is. Like right. well, you know, stuff that doesn't just have to, nearly doesn't have to be there. It's, it's, uh, it's him probably being forced into the concept that this has to be a movie so therefore there has to be a story so it's like okay i got like ex-military i gotta pay for a surgery and yeah. he's a hero and a good guy but i don't know it's just you could literally just do the whole south park manatees pulling ideas out of a out of a tank thing <laughs> with this and it would be the same thing effectively i um, do wonder though i wonder if there are people who kind of like the they're like the swing voters of movies where it's like there's just some like inscrutable thing that for some reason that makes them want to see a movie versus not. And mm -hmm. like in the case of this, it's like, I wonder if there are people who like, gosh, I, I, I you know, I, I really wanted to like this movie, this Michael Bay movie, but what it needed was another minute of, you know, <laughs> of yeah. uh, schmaltz. Over, overwrought, you know, just uh, the stupidity. Yeah. Like, these people must exist, don't you think? Like, I guess, I guess so. And I, maybe they're the people in the studios who are like insisting upon like, well, you know, we got to get something out of this. But then my problem is that also like he conveniently ignores a lot of those things. Like for so, maybe it was because, okay, I'm just going to have to reveal the whole thing for myself. I watched the first 45 minutes of this movie on silent i didn't because i was i was on a plane that didn't have a screen so i would like logged on to the shitty delta wi-fi like it was a movie that was available and i watched it on my phone without subtitles yeah. i figured i could like kind of glean what was going on you know with yeah. most of the movie <laughs> um but something that i just couldn't get over was that he shot the cop and they're like trying to make him out like oh but he helped us and like oh we gotta save this guy it's like that dude was the one who shot the cop the whole time it's not like ah but the cop himself let him off the hook so well stupidly because they like me. they like they like to conveniently forget these things so the movie can hit its other plot points where he's but he's a soldier and he's listen a, andy this is a nuanced film where there's a lot of moral gray area um, oh, okay yeah. yeah yeah you're right it is uh yeah I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to say about this movie, uh, but I would like to at least uh, point out my favorite line of the movie mm -hmm. is right before, I don't know, spoiler alert, right before the big firefight with the other family in which he's like, with when we were kids, you, guys. Yeah, it's like, well, I would have gone left and you would go left too, that whole scene or whatever. <laughs> Once they waste everybody in that upstairs area, and right before Jake Gyllenhaal kills the other, like the lead of the cartel, he yeah. says, "You think he's my pretend brother? He's my real brother." <laughs> I don't know why, but that wine, the way it was delivered. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's just so good. You think he was my pretend brother? He was my real brother. Yeah. Bang! They should have just ended the movie right there. That would have been a perfect way to end that movie. It would have been a, yeah. it's it's the that's really the emotional peak of the movie. That it really is. It's everything. It's everything you really want. You know. Um. Yeah. No. It, it's there's something very awkward about that line. Um. But it's made into kind of the you know James Bond pre kill shot like clever line. It's not yeah. great. It's not great. Yeah. No, it I think it is. I think it is great, and I think the fact that they. Right probably had to do multiple takes of it from multiple yeah. different angles means that they knew how great it was because nobody at any point stopped and said maybe he should <laughs> use the turn of phrase pretend brother pretend brother yeah <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, yeah. I think a few things to say about this. I mean, yeah, it's like re really the most remarkable thing for me was definitely the drone footage. I mean, I do like a um, kind of like, I like a bootleg surgery scene for sure. Um, mm -hmm. That always appeals to me in a movie like, you know, Prometheus, for example, was like kind of a, a hunk of trash. But I really liked the cesarean section scene. I thought that was the best part of the best film. Part of the whole movie, yeah. I thought the surgery scene on this was good, just because it's something about it, you know, ups the intensity when you have, um, you know, Megan Fox Jr. Basically, like, you know, she's got her hands around the guy's spleen or whatever, and other guys, and that's just um, that. That was good. I, I, I could appreciate that scene for sure. But it is interesting that to contrast it to like The Rock, um, The Rock, I love. Right. So, yeah. so like, why is it that Bay makes films that are much more disorganized and chaotic than The Rock? The Rock is like not chaotic compared to this. Like The Rock is actually has some genuinely human scenes in it that actually are yeah. pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to go with the idea that he was still fully budding or breaking out as a director, you know. Um, what did he do before the rock is it fair to look that up right now i don't know i don't know what it was but i'm i'm gonna be under the impression that he probably had only made a couple of films before that one or at least only a couple of films that were like of any consequence and so bad he probably boys. Didn't... I bad, boys... bad boys was before or after it though oh i think bad boys was after the rock I would, I would have to almost guarantee that i don't know I don't know. See, this is I'm I'm revealing again. Like I don't I'm not brushed up on my Michael Bay. I know the ones I've seen and I don't know the ones that I like and I appreciate him. But I think I think it's an idea of like how long is the leash from the network or the or the producers. You know, it's like Bad Boys was number one. First wow. Time. Okay. That's that's dope. Yeah. So Bad Boys, cool movie, and then he made The Rock, then Armageddon, probably Bad Boys Two, and then Pearl Harbor, just, Bad Boys. Yeah. And then just make Transformers movies for like another decade, probably something like that. Um, Basically, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's I think the leash was just not that long yet for yeah. him, you know. And I think maybe he also, you know, we refine ourselves as we get older, don't we? Like we we yeah. we get more. Oh, refine. I wouldn't use the word refine, but more like we. Hmm. I think it's a distillation. Like I definitely think as you Still get older, you, you know the things that you like and you know the things that you're interested in and how far you go outside of the lane is it gets more and more narrow I think as the older you get. Yeah. Um and I think for Michael Bay when he wouldn't make his movies, you know, for a long time it was probably we're going to have to put you in a little box, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and this movie's got like oh the script needs some more work. You know, they probably did work on the script. Whereas after that, they're like, oh, no, the thing that makes the money yeah. are the explosions. You know, it's got to be splody. Stuff's got to explode. Stuff's going to explode. And he does it really good. He does it better than anyone, really. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, uh, yeah, that's the great, I think that's a great way to sum it up. I mean, I'll, I'll, it is interesting that if, if you ignored things like the crispness of the high definition, uh, video track and some other elements and you watched like the rock and this movie you might think the rock came later and you would be like wow he's really matured as a filmmaker <laughs> yeah it's almost like these are his film school efforts and then yeah. he's like not real good like yeah he watched them in a reverse like that yeah. is probably the better way to do michael bay it's like start very immature childish boy yeah. and boy making yeah Films. playing with his transformers <laughs> and then eventually he like comes up with a pretty solid idea of yep. you know uh with a bit of a thesis you know i you know i guess it's just it's the ham factor too it's like armageddon had some ham factor going on in there um you yeah. know oh, aerosmith, yeah. aerosmith and you know the whole nine yards it's it's almost like he got more and more interested in making 90 minute or two hour long music videos than he was interested in making like a story that has a thread, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, <laughs> this, this explosion happens and then this one happens and then this, one happens, that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, ambulance. Don't rush to go see it. Yeah. Don't whatever. Like if you really, really need to see it, I it's think not, it's not an emergency, if you will, to see ah, it is not an emergency. No. Uh, but the drone is cool. Good for you, Michael Bay, um, for finding that for yourself. I think it fits perfectly yes. into your life and, you know, whatever you do next, I hope it's another, uh, original property. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, uh, you don't put any plot in there at all. I think, I hope you just go and just, you know, explode it up. 
Well said. Uh, all right, well, this has been Minor Quibbles. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about Croupier. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>